We have a quorum uh, to begin the meeting. Is Mr. Lankowitz unmuted and joining us? I'm here. Okay. So, uh, Chair Lankowitz is now in a position to call the meeting to order because we now have a quorum of five planning commissioners. All right. We'll call the meeting to order for, uh, oh goodness, 2021, our uh, first meeting in January. So, in terms of our roll call, I'll just call roll and you answer if you're present at the meeting. We have Chair Linkowitz. Here. Commissioner Olson. Here. Commissioner Waters. Here. Commissioner Baffa. Here. Commissioner Hay. Here. Commissioner Bernhardt. Appears to be absent. And Commissioner Gilmore. And Commissioner Gilmore is absent. Um, Margie, can you confirm that the uh, packet's been posted and the required notice of today's meeting has been provided? Yes, it has. Okay. So that means we have jurisdiction to hear the cases that are brought forward on this agenda. So that'll bring us to item two. All right, we have the approval of minutes for December 1st, 2020, regular meeting held via Zoom. I make a motion we approve the meetings. I mean, minutes as, as uh, printed. Seconded. It's been motioned and seconded. We have a roll call vote on the minutes. Um, Commissioner Hay. Aye. Commissioner Waters. Aye. Commissioner Baffa. Commissioner Baffa, you're muted right now. Can you unmute, please? Commissioner Baffa? Yes. Are you in favor of approving the minutes? Yes. And then uh, Commissioner Olson? Yes. And Chair Lankowitz? Aye. So that motion carries five to zero. Okay, are we ready for a new business? We are ready to go to uh, items 3.1A and B. So uh, item 3.1A and B are quasi-judicial land use matters and they are applications that were filed by South Ohio land LLC and the first application that's before you is an application filed by Mr. James Hall who is present at the meeting. He's filed that on behalf of South Ohio land LLC and he is requesting approval of an amendment of the future land use map uh, to change the future land use designation of property located on Cortland Circle um, south of Schilling Road and west of South Ohio Street from its present designation as future employment to make it part of the neighborhood center at Schilling in Ohio. So um, these are separate applications. They may uh, blend in a little bit with each other um, and some of the graphics may overlap as well. But as the uh, Planning Commission is aware, uh, the current Salina Comprehensive Plan was adopted in 2010. And that uh, 2010 plan delineates certain areas as urban service areas. And there are primary, secondary, and rural uh, service areas. And as part of that, um, the future land use map is a part of that comprehensive plan and the future land use plan is designed to show um, what future land use patterns there would be within the community. And so um, 
the comprehensive plan language states that where circumstances or land use and development goals have changed, amendments to the land use map may be appropriate to accommodate development that furthers the plan vision or other goals of the comprehensive plan. And so the property we're talking about is known as Liberty Edition number two. It's located at the southwest corner of Schilling Road and Ohio Street, and it presently contains a mix of PC5, PC6, and I2 zoning. And it's shown as an employment center on the, on the future land use map, except for a single lot at the intersection of Schilling and Ohio, which is shown as being part of the Schilling, Ohio Neighborhood Center. So Mr. Hers has the map up and, and the area that's identified in orange there is the area delineated as a future neighborhood center. And so as, as part of that, there are uses like industrial plants, warehousing, office parks um, that are considered employment uses because they imply, provide employment opportunities. Um, and they're also generally considered to be the most intense uses that we have in the city. So some examples of uses are um, manufacturing plants, warehouses, educational campuses, airport, rail and support services, and then office uses. And so, South Ohio land owns the entire Liberty Edition, and they have filed this application that's a companion to this request to rezone nine lots on Cortland Circle that are currently Plan C6 to Plan C5. And these are part of the office employment area. And there are also existing lots in this subdivision that are zoned PC5 as well as PC5 at the various intersections at Schilling and Ohio. So from a zoning standpoint, going from PC6 to PC5 would be compatible with the zoning and future uses of nearby property. But the applicant in support of that has filed this application requesting to expand the neighborhood center to incorporate 14 lots in Liberty Edition number two. And of those 14, five are zoned PC5. And uh, the others is proposing to rezone from PC6 to PC5. However, the uh, C5 and Plan C5 zoning designations are not listed as potential zoning districts under the neighborhood center land use narrative. And so therefore, in addition to requesting a change to the future land use map, South Ohio land is requesting that the land use category be amended to add C5 and plan C5 as potential zoning districts. And so again, um, if you look at the zoning map, which Mr. Hers has up, the um, all of the lots around that intersection are zoned Plan C5, except for a planned C2 lot that's farther north along South Ohio Street. So on page four of our report, we've sent out some factors that the Planning Commission and City Commission should consider any time there's a request to change the future land use plan. And in regard to that, um, in reviewing this application, staff feels like this amendment is justified by changing conditions in the community because in 2003, when Liberty Edition was originally created, it was Plan C6 and warehousing that was envisioned for the lots around Cortland Circle. The market and the surrounding neighborhood have changed in those 17 years and the uh, South Ohio land believes that the neighborhood center as addressed in the current comprehensive plan will work better for this site. Um, the property owner is interested in doing mixed use um, development on these lots, which fits better with the neighborhood center land use category than an employment center. 
in all four corners of the Schilling and Ohio intersection are part of a neighborhood center now. Um, the time and that has passed and the market have shown that there was no demand for the warehousing land use in this area. Rezoning to plan C5 allows for better overall usage of the site and it's more in line with current market conditions. The PC6 zoning and the warehousing wouldn't fit within a neighborhood center concept and the employment land use classification does not list any type of housing as an appropriate land use, but the neighborhood center does. So in addition to the changing conditions, the comprehensive plan encourages new development to take place in locations that are already served by utilities and services. And one of the things about the Liberty Edition, even though it's on the south side of Schilling Road, all needed services and utilities are in place um, to support development. We have paved streets, operational water and sewer lines, all other utilities are in place, plus a drainage system. And so the, the change to a neighborhood center would not negatively impact neighboring properties um, because the plan C5 aligns better with the comprehensive plan and moving to a neighborhood center environment. And so your role in this case is to determine what your vision is for future development of the north half of Liberty Edition number two, south of Schilling Road. And so, Dustin, if you want to show us, show what we, what we refer to as the north half is basically everything that's north of McIntosh Street there. So that the area that's shaded in gray and the other lots along Schilling, that would be considered the, the north half. And the idea uh, behind this area was that it was envisioned that there would be a residential housing developed north of Schilling Road and that there would be industrial down towards Waterwell Road and there needed to be some sort of land use buffer or transition use between the north side of Schilling Road and industrial farther south. So this north half of Liberty Edition was designed to serve as a buffer. So your your choices as to the land use map would be to maintain the current map, the current boundaries between neighborhood center and employment center. You could recommend that the map be amended to show the subject properties as part of the Schilling, Ohio neighborhood center or you could recommend that the map be amended to show only the properties in, um, to the east um, of the north-south drainage easement as part of the neighborhood center if you find the limited changes justified. So the staff report has a, a typo in it. it. It refers to the lots west of the north-south drainage easement, but it should say east of the north-south drainage easement. So if you could go back to one of those maps, Dustin, that shows the drainage channel. So that white strip that goes through the middle of the property is the <clears throat> it's a north-south drainage easement that helps drain that area. So option three refers to um, changing the map only to include those properties east of the ditch in that area. Um, so, um, to continue along those lines, the other aspect of that is, um, an explanation of what the neighborhood center means and much of the discussion that the commission has had over the years about the neighborhood center. And so, because so much of the neighborhood center, um, was are already developed. Um, five of the eight neighborhood centers are almost 90% developed. It appeared to be very challenging and unlikely that you could reform those areas into a neighborhood center concept. 
and then both staff and the planning commission were concerned that the having separate and higher development standards for a neighborhood center might actually discourage development and push development towards commercial property uh, and away from neighborhood centers. So um, we, we still have the neighborhood center, but the neighborhood center is primarily focused on encouraging a mix of uses such as neighborhood commercial and housing to locate closer to each other. So on, on the question of what zoning districts fit within a neighborhood center, um, we've had that discussion previously with the Planning Commission in 2017. And in 2017, the Planning Commission recommended that the list of potential zoning districts include C3, Plan C3, C5, and Plan C5. And the City Commission generally concurred with that recommendation, but then deleted C5 and Plan C5 from the final version of their uh, text amendment that was approved. So you could go back and reinstate your 2017 recommendation to add C5 and Plan C5, or you could recommend that Plan C5 only be added, but straight C5 should not be added or you could recommend that the status quo be maintained and that no changes be made to the list of potential zoning districts. So we'll go back to the uh, map question first and those, those options. Um, what Dustin has on the screen represents um, the request that was made by the applicant, and that was to expand the boundary of the neighborhood center at this intersection to include those additional lots. So on page five of your report, we have the options as it relates to the map, and option one would be to leave the boundaries alone and reaffirm the existing map boundaries. Option two, would be to um, adopt the map that Mr. Hers has uh, on the screen, which to incorporate all that area into the neighborhood center. And the third option would be to incorporate only the lots that are located east of the drainage ditch. And then to leave the ones to the west out, outside of that neighborhood center. So, um, I would pause to see if there's questions about that and we'll deal with the map question first and then we can deal with the question of what what zoning districts should be a part of a neighborhood center concept. So with that, I'd be open to any questions that you have of staff. And if you have questions of Mr. Hall, you can direct those to him or um, we can wait and let Mr. Paul um, make his comments and presentation. Uh, Dean, I've just got one question. That conservation area, is that that's shown on there, is that just a buffer is all that is? Well, what that represents is, and it, it could have easily been applied to the other ditch as well. That's, that's what's referred to as the Schilling Road ditch. It's a, it's a, the reason it's shown separately, it's because it's owned by the city of Salina. We own and maintain that ditch. And what it was is it's a, it's a bypass channel. Um, for those who have been around Salina for a long time, water used to come into the city from the south and it would flood the Bonnie Ridge area, South High, um, all of that area and in 1993 that ditch was constructed and what it does is it catches all the water that migrates into the city from the south and diverts it east over to the Smoky Hill River Channel so it can't get up into the city. So the conservation area there is showing that that's owned by the city and it's, it's public land. Um, the other conservation area is a is a small pond there in the Bonnie Ridge subdivision. But that linear 
area south of Schilling Road. That is owned by the city and that's the Schilling Road ditch. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions about the, the map portion of the application? Uh, Dean, what kind of uh, uh, businesses would go in there? Well, the, uh, the businesses that would be allowed there would be dependent on, on the, uh, the zoning that's ultimately approved. Right now, the property is zoned Plan C6, which would allow almost any kind of business and the original intent for making that C6 instead of C5 is that there was a desire in 2003 to try to um, make those lots available for businesses that wanted to have a warehouse or warehousing. And as you can see, if you've driven out there, there hasn't been any interest in um, developing those types of uses there. And so since the only motivation for doing C6 in the first place was to attract warehousing and there's no longer an interest in that. I would think that when you're talking about mixed uses, you're going to be talking about uses that support surrounding neighborhoods, whether that's a small restaurant, whether that's nail salons and beauty shops, dry cleaners, things of that nature is is what you would be looking at in terms of a, a neighborhood center concept so would, would there would be uh, mixed retail and and uh, and commercial uh, storage instead well the other the other thing that a neighborhood center and C5 zoning does is it opens up the area also for different forms of residential housing. So you could have a situation where with the neighborhood center concept where you have some areas set aside for forms of housing and then also have neighborhood retail or services um, to support that. So that that's one of the main concepts in the residential um, is the residential component of the neighborhood center, which is different than a straight commercial or a straight employment center. So that that's the concept behind neighborhood centers is to try to encourage a mix of both commercial and surrounding residential units. So just for the benefit of the commission on page six of the report, we, the, in the comprehensive plan says a neighborhood center is a smaller mixed use node that consists of locally focused services that can include a residential component. Convenience goods such as smaller specialty grocery stores, personal services like dry cleaning, beauty salon, banks, restaurants, gas stations, and small offices are the primary commodities and services that are provided within neighborhood centers. So the idea is to have smaller scale businesses as opposed to a, a strip center or larger commercial um, centers. And then to be able to intermix that with residential housing if, if, the, if there's an market and interest for that. Work into that area. I think you might've got cut off the first part of that. Is that a question? Yeah, so would uh, an apartment complex fall within the that part of the resident or if, if that area was designated for a neighborhood center, that would 
support a mix of various multifamily housing, whether it's duplexes, triplexes, fourplexes, um, an apartment complex, elderly housing, any of those types of things would fit within a neighborhood center concept, but would not be would not be foreseen if it if it was an employment hub or employment center. So that that's the primary distinction between the current employment designation and a possible neighborhood center designation. Okay, thank you. I think the other thing that I may fail to mention and we may bring up in the zoning, but the part of what makes the Liberty Edition number two somewhat unique is that it was the first development out in this neighborhood. So in terms of annexation and, and zoning and platting and all that, the Liberty Edition came first in 2003, followed up by Quail Meadows on the north side of Schilling Road, which occurred after. And then you had Stone Lake on the northeast corner. And then finally the Ryan addition on the southeast corner, which is currently undeveloped. But in terms of um, what happened first, it was the Liberty addition. And so it was unknown at that time exactly what was going to happen around that intersection. And as it turned out, um, the, the plan C6 and the trying to accommodate warehousing um, was not was not the right mix for for this property and now the South Ohio land has a different vision for the property. So if there's if there's no further questions from for the staff, we might want to hear from Mr. Hall um, just so he can explain to you the the vision that South Ohio Land now has for this property and why the, the request to expand the neighborhood center. Thank you, Dean. I appreciate everyone coming together on Zoom today to do this. I this is the first time I've been involved in one of these types of meetings. Zoom. I'm we're used to being in a room where I can stand up and come to the microphone and talk to y'all. If, if you can't hear me, please let me know. I'll, I'll speak louder or adjust. Um, Dean, um, Dean, Dean was very right. Um, we were the, we were the first people to that, to that corner. And we did this in 2003 and frankly, everybody, we, we did the, we did the best we could to envision what we thought was going to work um and we were wrong um we uh the times have changed um the areas around um uh, our our site have developed uh, differently than than we uh, anticipated and thought they would and thus we don't see an uh, a want or a a reason to continue to want to put um, C6 uh, type businesses into this location. Our initial thought was that this would be a, a great place for warehousing. Um, and we were we were just wrong. Um, so as we've looked at this over the last year and a half and talked about the ways to do this differently, um, We've done a lot of uh, soul searching and, and discussing and and the expanding the neighborhood center that is uh, already in the uh, upper northeast quadrant of this um, to include basically all uh, the, the lots that we're talking about seem to fit with the way the community is going um, and what's going on in this uh, in this neighborhood. Um, when we when we initially did this, one of the things we did was we said we want to be shovel ready. We put in the streets, we put in the city utilities, 
Um, we've got a lot of uh, Kansas gas gas lines run in there. Um, we've got storm sewers. Um, we constructed as part of this the north-south ditch um, that runs down through the middle of the property. Um, so they did also when you when you build on one of these lots, um, the advantage of this large ditch down through the middle is you drain directly in, into that and you, you're not building detention ponds on your lots. There are some one-time fees that you pay to do that, but those are minimal fees compared to what the uh, long-term costs are for detention ponds on the property. Um, you, you can see the two buildings that we have done out at the site, the Kennedy and Co. facility, which is part of actually what's called Liberty Edition 1, um, and we worked with the city of Salina to get that initial piece of property in, done, platted, so that we could um, get the initial building of that building done and, and up, and Kennedy and Co. moved in there. Um, and while we were building that building, we worked with the city to zone uh, and plat the rest of this. Um, the second building out there is the uh, Sunflower Bank uh, headquarters building. Um, both of those buildings, well, anything that goes on to this pro property has to go through our architectural con control committee. Um, so it's very well regulated, um, not only by what the city zoning and rules are, but but what our own internal um, rules and um, requirements are. Um, we've, we've had the opportunity to put some other um, We've had some requests to put some other businesses out there, um, but what they, what their vision of it to go in there and what our vision was didn't mesh, so we chose to pass. Um, we have seen, uh, like I said, in the last year and a half, um, as as all of this area is changing and moving out there, that what we initially did in 2003 is wrong. So. Um, we're coming today to say we would like to uh, amend where we are um, and expand the neighborhood center and change this zoning. Basically, we're down zoning from a PC6 part of this to a PC5. Um, but that's our request, and we hope everyone can go along with us. We appreciate your feedback. Does anybody have any questions for the applicant? If not, then again, this, this is a two part question and the first part deals with the map. And then once that is decided, then the second part deals with what, what zoning classifications should go with the neighborhood center concept. And so your, your first item for consideration is, is called out on page five of your staff reports. And as it relates to the map, um, the planning commission has as its first alternative to maintain, to reaffirm the existing map and maintain the existing boundaries between employment and neighborhood center. And Mr. Hall asked me previously and again today, and, and the commissioners could well ask why, why was just a single lot at the Southwest corner designated as a neighborhood center originally in 2010. And the, the thought was that that was probably the, the only lot or the main lot that would um, be developed with intersection oriented uses such as a convenience store or something along those lines. Um, but the line that was drawn in 2010 was not very scientific. It was, it was based on um, predicting future land use patterns. And so it, it wasn't arbitrary, but it, it, you know, it could have easily been a larger area but at the time only the the single lot at the southwest corner was shown as part of that neighborhood center 
So your, your first option would be to leave that just as it is. The second option would be to amend the map to show all of the subject properties identified as part of an expanded neighborhood center at that intersection. And then the third option would be to uh, only change the designation for those lots that are east of that north-south drainage easement or drainage ditch. And so, um, as, as, so I don't I don't have my handy pointer, so I'm going to rely on on Dustin. But basically, you would you would designate the lots that are at the quadrant um, just to the uh, east of the ditch and the other ones would remain as is. Um, the companion zoning application does include lots west of the ditch. And so that's why um, this, this is the request area for the um, land use map change. So with that, um, those three options on the table, um, I'll turn it back to the chair and you can entertain uh, motions or discussion about those three options. Do we have any discussion items or feedback we need to hear on this? I just wanted to make sure. So the staff's recommendation is option two, right? Um, that that is our recommendation because it it goes along with the applicant's rezoning application. Okay. But your your, it's within your discretion to do a reduced area if you see the lots east of the ditch differently um, than west of the ditch. But our our recommendation is the whole thing because that that ties in with the applicant's rezoning request. Yeah, I think that makes the most sense because otherwise, if you have it as a neighborhood center, then right next to it, you have just a small area that's not going to be compatible with the other is. I mean, back into a warehouses, those types of things. So I think that re redoing the whole thing would be the best, best thing. Now, so do we do this for a motion? Is this going to be strictly for the application M20-6 right now then? Yes, we are focused only on M20-6 and it has two components. The first component is the map itself. And then the second component would be the, the zoning districts that are within the neighborhood center. So. The first, the first motion is to define what the boundaries are of the neighborhood center. Okay. So then I guess I would make a, a motion to approve application M20-6 to um, reclassify from future employment to future neighborhood center, which would be the um, recommendation number two from the staff. Second. It's been motioned and seconded. I just wanted to double check, make sure there's not any members of the public here that have any feedback regarding this this item. I was gonna interject it just to let everybody know that we don't have anybody uh, additional uh, logged into the meeting currently. The only individual that's not a commissioner or an applicant on this particular uh, item is the next applicant, Mr. Crane. I don't know if he has any thoughts on it or not, but he would be the only other individual that we would probably want to seek uh, information from. I'm good. I, I support it. So <laughs> good luck, Jamie. <laughs> we have a Thank you. Who, who gave the second on that motion? I second it. Joe Hay. Yeah. Joe Hay. Okay. So we have a, a motion to recommend that the future land use map be amended to show the shaded properties there as part of an expanded neighborhood center. And uh, I will call roll on that motion. So we have Commissioner Baffa. Aye. Commissioner Waters. Aye. Commissioner Hay. Aye. Commissioner Olson. Aye. Chair Linkowitz? Aye. Okay, so that motion passes by a five to zero vote. And then the next part of this um, 
The second part is uh, back Back in 2017, we had a similar request and we were discussing the list of, of potential use zoning categories within a neighborhood center. And one of the things that staff had tried to emphasize to the um, commissioners at that time was looking at Crawford in Ohio and then looking at this neighborhood. Dustin, if you could put the, the zoning map up again, just briefly. So what you see at this intersection is plan C5, plan C5, plan C5, plan C5, but the plan C5 is not listed as a uh, potential zoning district in the neighborhood center land use narrative. And so um, we, had, we attempted to address that in 2017 and the final version of that amendment did not in, include that, but your options as relates to the districts. Um, I also observed that that C3 did not get included in 2017 either, but your first option would be to recommend that the C3, C5, and Plan C5 be added to the list of potential zoning districts in the neighborhood center. You could recommend that just the Plan C5 be added to the list, but, but none of the other districts, or you could recommend that the status quo be maintained and that no changes be made to the list of potential zoning districts in the neighborhood center. And staff's, staff's view was that the, um, the exclusions of those listed districts was just an oversight by the consultants who helped prepare the plan in 2010 and didn't recognize um, some of the existing zoning patterns that we had in place. And so from staff's view, a large percentage of the total land use area that makes up neighborhood centers is zone C5 and PC5. And including those districts as potential districts would assist staff in administering and interpreting and applying the land use plan in these areas. So um, the decision as to what to recommend is yours. Um, so you, you could um, insert C3, C5 and plan C5 um, into the list. You could look at this area and focus on the plan C5 and, and add it as the only additional district, or you could recommend that there be no changes made to the list of potential zoning districts. So I'll turn it back over to the chair to entertain a motion or discussion. Any discussion or feedback on that? So right now it is zone P5 and P uh, PC5 and PC6. Yes, yeah, so just so you understand the chronology, um, this property was annexed, zoned, and platted in 2003, which predated um, the current comprehensive plan. So the zoning was already in place in on many of these properties at the time that the uh, future land use map and the comprehensive plan was adopted. And so what we have found as a staff is that the neighborhood center was overlaid on top of properties, many of which already had C5 and C3 zoning. So um, this to me is an effort to make our comprehensive plan and our existing zoning map align better. The, um, the uh, consultants who assisted with the comprehensive plan were fairly confident that they were going to um, next get a contract to rework our uh, entire zoning ordinance. And so it was in their minds, not important to tie the comprehensive plan back or plan back to the existing zoning categories. And that has proven not to be the case because we still have our existing 
long time zoning ordinance. And so from staff's perspective, this is just an effort to try to make the, the zoning map and the comprehensive plan um, line up better. I don't really see a need to change anything uh, unless I'm missing something. Well, here's the, we have a companion item, which is the next item, which is to rezone property um, to plan C5. And the commission has already recommended that the neighborhood center be expanded. So if, if you're trying to make a finding or reason that rezoning properties to plan C5 is consistent with the comprehensive plan, then if you have a land use category like neighborhood center that doesn't list or identify plan C5 as a, as a district that's a potentially eligible district, then you can't really conclude that zoning property plan C5 is consistent with the comprehensive plan. So the, the reason for the change is so that you have a better alignment between the land use category neighborhood center and the potential zoning districts that would occur inside the neighborhood center. So that that's the reason. So we need to have the neighborhood center allow the C5 and the PC5 or just the PC5 to well, make it consistent. To, to, make, to make it make sense in, in the uh, context of the next item. Right. Okay. So do we need to make a motion then on that before we get to the application Z20.5-5? Yeah, so on M20-6 is a two-part recommendation. The first recommendation you've made as it relates to the, the land use boundary. The yes. second part is as you could, you could recommend as um, Mr. Bath has indicated he didn't, didn't see a need to make any changes to the list of zoning districts. That is an option. You could recommend that only plan C5 be added or PC5 be added as an additional potential district. Or you could recommend that both C5 and plan C5 um, be added as potential zoning districts. Okay, so the difference between the C5 and the PC5? The primary difference between the C5 and the planned C5 is under planned C5, any site plan for a specific use, be it office, commercial, multifamily, residential, um, whatever it might be, that site plan has to be reviewed and approved by the planning commission before a uh, building permit can be issued. Okay. In C5 district, a building permit could be issued um, just under the auspices of the of the C5. So the uh, I guess the way that the reason that we've distinguished between C5 and Plan C5 is that the the C the Plan C5 give is areas that the Planning Commission has more control over in terms of what what occurs there, and so the the Plan C5 is slightly more restrictive than the C5. So if you just didn't want feel comfortable opening it up to all straight C5 zone property, then you could um, amend it to list plan C5 um, as a potential zoning district. Yeah. In 2017, it turned out that the only, the only district that got added was plan C3. And so that, that 
that is what occurred um, there at the Crawford and Ohio intersection. But um, the reason we've broken it out is that you may only feel comfortable adding plan C5, and so we provided that as a separate option. Gotcha. Well, I think that would be the direction that I would be leaning in. I would agree with that. I agree too. Okay. The entire area to be PC5? Yeah, I think that for the neighborhood centers that we should allow, uh, we should add in the PC5 instead of strictly the C5 just because of the neighborhood center and what it's going to be coming close to residential in those areas. So I think that it gives you a little bit more control to make sure that it's going to blend in well with those areas. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I would be in okay. For your benefit, Mr. Baff, I'll give you two examples. Um, we have the intersection of Holmes and Cropper, which is currently undeveloped, and we have the corner of Markley and Magnolia currently undeveloped. If if you make the change to add Plan C5 as a potential zoning district, then if, if someone came forward um, with an application to rezone one of the corners at Markley and Magnolia, what you're saying is that you would be receptive to an application at that intersection, but only if it was Plan C5 as opposed to C5. If that, if that helps I, explain. I, I believe that. that's, yeah. So it, yeah. it's what we're doing here is kind of forward looking to say, if I've got vacant property in a neighborhood center or vacant intersections like those, that you would be open to considering plan C5 as part of a neighborhood center. And what alternative two says is that you're only, um, you're only willing or interested in adding plan C5 to that uh, list. So then are we ready? Can I make, are we ready for a motion or? I think so. Okay. I would make a motion then that we add the um, PC5 to the neighborhood center designation. Second. Okay, we've got a motion. It's been seconded. So the motion on the floor is a recommendation that plan C5 or PC5 be added to the list of potential zoning districts in the neighborhood center. Yes. Um, I'll take roll on that motion. Uh, Mr. Baffa? Yes. Commissioner Waters? Aye. Commissioner Hay? Aye. Commissioner Olson? Aye. Commissioner Lankowitz? Aye. Okay, that motion passes five to zero. And that would move us on to item 3.1B. And that is an application companion application that's been filed also by South Ohio land. And as, as described, um, we've given you all the background um, of what occurred in, in 2003. Um, as Mr. Hall indicated, there was, there was a lot of thought that went into um, what was occurring in this area, but at the same time, um, a little bit of guesswork and so when working with South Ohio land, staff pointed out that um, C6 was the first zoning district that allowed warehousing type uses. And so at the time, South Ohio land had that vision for those properties um, with the land abutting Sh Schilling Road being plan C5 um, and then stepping up to a, a C6 behind that. And um, as we've all learned, and the PC5 was designed to provide a physical and visual buffer between the housing north of Schilling Road and more intense uses to the south. And none of those intense uses that were envisioned at the time um, have occurred. 
And so because of the lack of market for warehouse type uses, South Ohio land is now envisions these lots as being developed with a mix of residential housing and light neighborhood scale commercial uses and more of a neighborhood center type development pattern. So if you think of it this way, warehousing is allowed in C6, but housing is not, and housing is allowed in C5, but warehousing is not. And so um, South Ohio land is requesting that these nine lots be redesignated from PC6 to PC5. Um, and if that request is approved, then all 16 commercial lots in Liberty Edition number two would be zoned PC5. So in terms of intensity, um, you could view this as actually a down zoning from PC6 to PC5. And so your role in, in this application is to determine whether PC5 would be a more appropriate designation for these lots than the current PC6 zoning. So under C5 zoning, you have all the uses permitted in C5 plus any conditional uses that might be approved by the planning commission. So this would include business and professional offices, retail stores, um, new and used vehicle sales, restaurants, those would be permitted uses and um, conditional uses would include different forms of housing like multifamily housing or assisted living. <coughs> and then we've, we've outlined for you the development standards which are, are not much different, but we've, we listed for you on page six, um, there are certain uses like agricultural implement sales, amusement parks, animal hospitals, automotive repair, equipment sales and rental, lumber yards, many warehouses, manufactured home sales lots. Those are things that are permitted in C6, but not in C5. And then you have uh, properties like outdoor theaters and warehouses that are allowed in C6, but not C5. So, the original request was for C6. The C6 was approved because it was kind of a buffer or transition between the, the PC5 along Schilling and the I2 farther south, but PC5 would serve that same purpose and would probably be more compatible with the remainder of the lots, not only in along Schilling Road, but also at the Schilling, Ohio intersection. Um, so all four quadrants, the lots right on those corners are zoned plan C5. And so um, staff believes that a change in zoning from PC6 to PC5 would make these lots more compatible with the zoning of nearby property. Um, and so the applicant also believes that some of the uses that he's seen that would be allowed in C6 would in, in South Ohio lands view is not compatible um, with what they're trying to attract as a character for Liberty Edition number two. Um, we attached a map that depicted the location of utilities in this area, but we do think it's important um, that all water, sanitary, sewer, gas, electrical lines are in place. Um, all the lots are in fact shovel ready and we did provide an attachment also that um, listed a number of impact fees collected in Liberty Edition number two. And uh, one of the things that the Planning Commission has indicated is important over time is that growth and development pay, pay for itself. And so one of the things that was done with the impact fees out here is that any development that occurs will help pay uh, for the cost of rebuilding Schilling Road, the cost of the uh, drainage ditch, as well as um, paying for a water line that was installed in Schilling Road. 
And so um, any development that does occur in this area will, will have those impact fees collected, which will help for the growth and development to pay for itself. Um, Cortland Circle is complete. It's a loop street that connects with Schilling Road. Dustin, you might wanna show on there where Brayburn is on paper, but not built. It's the only street out there that's not built, but Brayburn is an east-west street that um, runs from Cortland Circle over to Ohio and the potential access point. And if you're familiar with the area, you know that you can't get from Schilling Road across the ditch to those lots to the south. So one of the reasons for Brayburn Street was to provide better access to those lots um, that are in the north east corner there. The other thing I would point out is that there's platted restricted access on Ohio Street. So there's no individual driveways or access points on Ohio. Um, so all the access would be from Brayburn or Cortland Circle. Um, as far as the conformance with the comprehensive plan, um, you have just addressed that by amending the map and also recommending that plan C5 be a uh, identified uh, zoning district in the neighborhood center area. And so um, we've provided some possible findings on page nine of your report, which we uh, think support the applicant's request to go from C6 to PC5. And so your options on this zoning application would be to recommend approval of the applicant's request for um, down zoning these nine lots um, to PC5. You could recommend approval of, of down zoning to plan C3 instead if you find that there's some potentially incompatible uses. Um, we didn't encourage this option because there's no plan C3 in the vicinity and you would be creating an isolated district that's unrelated to any surrounding district. Um, you could recommend that consideration of this application be postponed to allow the applicant or staff to provide you with additional information, or you could recommend denial of the zoning change from PC6 to PC5. Um, if you determine that the, there are appropriate findings to support the requested zoning map change, um, staff would recommend option one, which would be to go from PC6 to PC5. Um, the other thing we wanted to note is that the applicant is requesting that submittal of final site development plans for each lot be deferred until a use is identified and a building permit is ready to be applied for. So um, in the case of the Sunflower Bank building there, that property was zoned plan C5 and the site plan and all the development plans for that site went before the planning commission for review and approval before a building permit was issued. And since they're not identified uses at this time, what that means is if you recommend PC5 zoning, then the site plans for those individual building sites will come back before the planning commission for review before any building permits are issued. So with that, I'd be open to any questions that commissioners might have. I do want to report that Mr. Stan Byquist, who owns property to the north and to the east of this property, um, said he was not going to be able to participate in the Zoom meeting, but he, he wanted the commission to know that um, he is supportive of the application and he hopes that the uh, Planning Commission will approve uh, South Ohio Lands request. So with that, I'd be open to any questions or you have about um, the application or any of the maps or attachments. I don't see any problem with uh, going PC5. Okay. 
Greg, I'd like to go ahead and make a motion that we request a zoning map change from PC to PC5, the uh, recommendation on option one. I'll second that motion. Mm -hmm. We would want to make sure that if there's anybody from the public uh, that they have a chance to speak. I don't think we have anybody. Uh, again, Mr. Crane is the only non-applicant, non-commissioner, non-staff person in the meeting, but uh, maybe there's somebody listening that, that wants to log in real quick to the meeting to, to say something and we want to give them a chance to speak. As I, <clears throat> I indicated, um, we did send notice out and post signs on this property. I had a phone call from Stan Byquist and a neighboring property owner who is not with us at this meeting. And I also had a conversation with Scott Burkamp of Burkamp Inc. And he just had some questions, but he didn't have any concerns about the application that's before you. I think given that uh, we don't have anybody new logging in that might've been watching on TV or something on access or Slime immediate connection, then I think we're, we're probably free to have a deliberation by the uh, commission. Thank you. So um, we do we do have a motion made by Commissioner Hayes and seconded by Commissioner Linkowitz to recommend that the uh, nine lots be rezoned from Plan C6 to Plan C5. And so I'll take a, a roll call on that, um, on the motion, Commissioner Baffa. Yes, aye. Commissioner Waters. Aye. Commissioner Olson. Aye. Commissioner Hay. Aye. Commissioner Linkowitz. Aye. Okay, that motion carries by a five to zero vote and these uh, recommendations on these items will go forward to the city commission on January 25th. And before we leave this item, we just see if Mr. Hall had any questions or comments about that. Uh, no questions. I'd just like to thank everybody for coming together this afternoon and deliberating this and seeing what, seeing what our change in our vision is and and um, appreciate your uh, vote in the affirmative. Thank you very much. We appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Um, the next item on the public hearing portion of your agenda is an application to, for a conditional use permit and was filed by Sunset, Salina Sunset LLC and the request is for approval of a conditional use permit to allow a climate controlled mini warehouse facility in a C3 shopping center district. And the proposed location is the west wing of the Sunset Plaza shopping center. And so Dustin, you have confirmed that Mr. Crane is still with us. I'm here. Okay. So the uh, Sunset Plaza is part of the Sunset Manor addition, and that addition includes property that's east and west of Broadway Boulevard between Crawford Street and Republic Avenue. And the uh, plat of that subdivision was approved back in 1952 by the Planning Commission. And what is now the Sunset Plaza site was zoned D for local business in 1954. There was a replat that was done in 1956 and that created the current zoning lot for the shopping center. Our uh, records indicate that the main east-west shopping center building uh, was constructed in 1959 with a number of um, additions made in the early 1960s. The north-south building was constructed in 1961. Um, our records indicate that the far western portion of the shopping center was converted into movie theaters in 1971. Mr. Crane may have better information, but our research indicated that the theaters closed 
in about 2002, and that space has primarily re remained vacant since that time. Uh, Salina Sunset LLC um, of McPherson, Kansas, purchased the shopping center in 2017. As planning commissioners may have observed, um, there have been some major updates and renovations made, particularly to the Dillon's uh, grocery store and the shopping center parking lot. And then in June of 2020, a building permit was issued for a new Dillon's fueling center in the parking lot along Crawford Street. And that facility opened in October uh, and has been in operation since that time. Um, what we've observed is that the shopping center owners, including the current owner, have struggled to fill that far western wing of the shopping center. And Salina Sunset LLC is now proposing to convert that space um, into a climate controlled mini storage facility. Um, there was a conceptual floor plan that was submitted. Um, and so the space would occupy about 125 foot wide by 130 foot deep space at the west end of the main shopping center. And it would provide about 15,135 square feet of indoor storage area. Um, applicant plans to renovate and reuse the open floor space by constructing 92 individual climate control personal storage units. And those would be accessed by five foot interior hallways. Um, they would be designed to provide connectivity throughout. Uh, the storage units are designed to provide various sizes, ranging from five by 10 units up to 10 by 20 foot units. And the individuals will be allowed to store possessions in an enclosed climate controlled environment for a monthly fee. Um, we had preliminary plans that we submitted to you in your packet. Um, it appears that the plan would to create a, a glass corridor at the front of the building. It appears that there would be office and restrooms in the front of the building and that all 92 storage units would have interior access within the buildings. All units would have overhead doors for maximum accessibility. Um, the entrance on the north into the glass corridor is not clearly marked on the plans, but it appears the customers will access the facility from the north side of the building facing the parking lot. Um, there's also a loading area showed at the rear. Um, we were not clear and we need to hear from the applicant whether Sunset Salina Sunset plans to own and operate this or they're gonna lease or sell it out to another party to operate. But the purpose of bringing this to you today is that many warehouse facilities are a conditional use in the shopping center district. And so um, your job is to evaluate the proposed use of the property and to determine whether enclosed mini warehouse facility at this location would be compatible with the shopping center and the development in the surrounding area. So this hearing today allows commissioners to receive public input about and establish appropriate conditions for approval of the proposed use. Um, one of the findings that you need to make is that the proposed use will comply with all applicable zoning ordinance regulations Sunset Plaza itself complies with all C3 district requirements, except for some non-conforming setbacks and the fact that the uh, shopping center was developed before the city had any landscape regulations. So there are some aspects that are non-conforming, but they are grandfathered in. And there is uh, more than adequate existing parking to support this use. We would ask the applicant to clarify whether there's gonna be a on-site office as, as part of this operation. Um, with the assistance of the current owner and their architects, we did a parking 
inventory of Sunset Plaza, and we, we determined that there are 30, 338 strike stalls, which exceeds the minimum requirements for the shopping center. And many warehouses would have a lower parking demand than retail space or a movie theater. Um, so there's not an increase in parking requirements. The applicant believes that this would bring new activity to a vacant space by creating safe and clean climate controlled storage. And he believes that's a service needed by citizens of the Salina. Um, this could be viewed as an upgrade of what is currently vacant space and it would put a vacant space into productive use. Um, your role is to think about this use and how it might impact the rest of the shopping center and the adjacent Broadway corridor. Um, the applicant points out there's no major exterior changes being made and the change in use will not be noticeable from the outside. Um, while the footprint and the nature of the um, exterior character will not change, there will be a different activity and that activity could change the perception of Sunset Plaza as a retail center. Um, but if you are familiar with the area, there is a mini storage facility directly to the east of Sunset Plaza at 1025 West Crawford. There shouldn't be any impact on public utilities <clears throat> or parking. Um, access is already established. Um, the uh, Broadway Crawford intersection is part of a community center which is like a larger vision of a neighborhood center. And so we've provided some information from the comprehensive plan, but the comprehensive plan basically encourages this intersection to be a mixed use node that will provide commercial retail and service uses to support the surrounding neighborhoods and the daily needs of residents as well as the urban redevelopment along Broadway north of this center. Um, so this comprehensive plan shows this property is being appropriate for commercial <clears throat> retail use. A, a storage facility is commercial in nature, but would not be considered a prime retail use. So while this would not conflict with the comprehensive plan, it would be a step away from Sunset Plaza's identity as a destination for shopping and dining. Um, your options this afternoon would be to approve the conditional use permit application as submitted. You could approve it subject to specified conditions or revisions to the plan. You could postpone consideration of the application if you feel additional information is needed to reach a decision or you could deny the application if you don't think findings can be made to support it. If based on the information provided by the applicant, the commission finds that conversion of this space to a climate controlled mini storage would not have a negative impact on the surrounding area and would be appropriate use, um, we would recommend approval of the application be made subject to the following conditions and any additional conditions that you think are appropriate. Um, use of the property should be limited to indoor climate control storage only, no additions or modifications of the existing building footprint or any building demolition should occur without approval of a site plan amendment by the planning commission. <clears throat> the applicant shall restripe or stripe at least 10 designated spaces in the existing parking lot to serve customers and employees of the mini warehouse facility. So in our review, the, the two things that we were not able to clearly confirm was whether there would be a designated office space inside this facility. And we couldn't clearly tell where the customer entrance was on, and if it would in fact be on the north side of the facade. So 
Uh, staff would be open to any questions you have about our report or the attachments, and then we would want to get clarification of those things from Mr. Crane. Is, uh, uh, how is it zoned right now? The, the entire shopping center is zoned C3 Shopping Center District. I would feel much better by with approving the application uh, should the front of the building be remodeled. It's kind of unattractive right now. Well, we don't we don't have an elevation for you, but we might want to you might want to direct that question to Mr. Crane as to if there's any plans for renovating or changing the exterior appearance of that. Was that whole front end, wasn't it already remodeled with the rest of the, yep. when Dillon's was remodeled? Uh, correct, and I don't know if this is my, my the correct time, but thank you for having me. We, we did a full remodel of uh, over one and a half million dollars on the exterior as of, uh, it, it ended in 2019, uh, you know, November of 2019. So it's been about a year. Um, we we remodeled the whole thing through the architects and uh, construction firm law uh, contractors who also did the fuel center and the uh, parking survey as well. So it was all the same group um, that did that. Just some feedback um, to the applicant I was in that parking lot a couple of weeks ago, and honestly, it's not a part of town I, I normally end up in, just day-to-day uh, -day business. But the one thing I wanted to mention to you, um, for what it's worth, I've been in this community on and off the last 40 some odd years, and I've never seen that place look better. It just it looked a, a lot more dialed in and clean and well-kept, and I appreciated it. So I'm going on two year old information. I'm I'm sorry, I think we walked on each other there. Yeah, I, I, I must be going on two year old information then. Uh, uh, I haven't been by there recently. I, I recommend you do because I think you'll be pleasantly surprised and um, okay. just um, just my personal two cents on this. Um, you know, you have a movie theater that hasn't cash flowed from a commercial property standpoint. Looks like he has a solution in mind. And my personal opinion is that I'm all for it and get that get that empty space filled and uh, get it profitable. Mm -hmm. I agree 100% because like I said, it, you know, the parking lot looks a thousand times better than it did once they mm -hmm. took those center pieces out and the way that they did the uh, that the fuel center looks fantastic. We're glad to have that there. Uh, this project is not going to do anything to the front of you know the front of the facade of the building. It's going to make it uh, you know be that inside space be usable. Mm -hmm. um, like you said, they haven't been able to um, to uh, lease any of this stuff out. So I'm all for it. Let's um, let's get them some revenue going through there. Mm -hmm. I would agree too. The whole building looks a lot better since the remodel. I go by that that area quite often. I do um, for the applicant. I do have one. I mean, two questions related to what uh, Mr. Andrews asked. So, is there going to be an office in that um, storage area? Um, we're determining whether it's going to go in the storage or in the old sub shop over by Advance America. And we're going to potentially make that a leasing slash, um, you know, office for our staff over there because that's vacant. Um, we have had interest, uh, and maybe this over answers the question. We've had quite a few groups interested of uh, four restaurants um, and a large um, supply company uh, for, that does pet supplies, uh, along with a hairstylist group. Uh, but all of those have fallen through because of covid and so the the idea is we put this get this approval and we start the plan but if any of those come back because of vaccinations anything like that then we, we would put those people in that space but right now we're we're getting 
uh, drilled uh, with costs from the remodel and no income. And so we, mm -hmm. we needed a solution. And so that's why we came up with this idea, knowing that there is a need. We did some research. There is a need for climate controlled storage uh, that's indoor in Salina. And so we thought that would be a great fit. Uh, one of our partners in the deal without disclosing names has experience in this and also had some information and helped us connect you know, the dots and, and put this together. Um, and one of the other questions uh, Mr. Andrew asked was if we're gonna be the owners, right now the plan is for a, a Salina Sunset, our, we're gonna do like a, an LLC, but we'll, have our, we'll sign a lease with ourselves uh, to, to make sure we meet all investor requirements. Uh, so that, that's sort of the structure of that as well. Um, so the office could either be in there or across the way in the old sub shop um, what that's been vacant for uh, before we owned it so at least four or five years okay. what about the entrance would that be on that north side correct the entrance is on the north side uh, there is an area behind uh, the movie theater if you look on the south side that um, you sort of see how it juts out mm -hmm. it's on the top of the picture but it's on the south side of the property that we could back a truck in if there's somebody that needed to unload items. Um, there will be a, a, a scanner. Yeah, exactly, where, right where you can see the brick there. Um, there are two doors. Uh, one is hard to see, but because uh, it's painted the same color. But there would be a door there that is accessible. The way it's going to be set up, and this is all still being worked on, uh, is that you'll have a QR code through your phone. Uh, so when you rent a unit, you'll use your phone to open the door uh, and that will be a code um, access and it'll have an alarm that has to shut so it can't be propped open. Um, so that will be also not only in the front, but in the rear as well on that south side uh, for anyone that needs to unload. There, because of uh, fire exits, et cetera, those doors have to be clear anyway. So um, that's what we've been thinking, I mean, obviously, open to your input but that's how if we like a big truck had to come in and drop something off that way it doesn't block everything and there's space for it but the day-to-day -day customer would be parking in front and entering from the front that's correct that's correct and there's parking spots there as we put in the new parking lot we added spaces actually even with the fuel center because we took out the medians uh, that created so much havoc uh for people so we when we took those out we were actually able to add spots so um we're relining the lot uh actually it might have just been completed uh depending on weather uh so the 10 spots or nine or 10 spots recommended um, right across the the drive aisle have been added in between McDonald's and the north side of the north entrance there. So that sh we should be able to meet that requirement as well. And it's, and yeah, it's the, yeah, you can see them there. Yep, with the new lights. Yep. And I apologize for for calling it unattractive i didn't realize that it was remodeled <laughs> it was when we bought it it was ugly it was it was really falling apart which uh i don't know if we, we should disclose all of this but when we did our demo uh one of the forklifts bumped a piece of it and it fell over but with maybe just a little knock so that's that's how precarious it was so uh mr Baffa, i agree with you it was it was pretty ugly so we had to do something so thank uh, thanks for acknowledging it though and everyone else's compliments are much appreciated we've yeah. we put a lot of blood sweat and tears into this one we're, we're ready to get at least and uh, put some permanent financing and get some cash flow our investors definitely are as well so any additional uh, questions for the applicant Yeah, just on a closing note, I'd point out that um, there was a lot of cooperation and good work that was done between uh, the owners, city staff, and Dillon's to make that fuel center a reality. And that, that was a real plus for Dillon's. It's a real plus for the center. It's a real plus for the neighborhoods. Very nice. Do we have any members of the public present that need to comment on this? 
I currently don't see any, but we'll uh, we'll give it a moment or so to to see if there's anybody that that logs in real quick. I move we approve. I'll second it. All right, it's been motioned and seconded. Okay, Commissioner Waters. Aye. Commissioner Olson. Aye. Commissioner Hay. Aye. Commissioner Linkowitz. Aye. Okay, I got everybody, didn't I? That you didn't call my name. Uh, Commissioner Baffa, you're last. Uh, you made the motion. <laughs> So that motion passes unanimously for Mr. Crane's benefit on a conditional use permit. The planning commission application is final unless neighboring property owners should submit a protest petition. And based on the lack of response that we've gotten um, for this meeting or for the notices that we sent out, we don't anticipate that happening. So we would anticipate this action being final and we will communicate that to you in writing. Thank you very much. Th everyone, thank you. And the kind words are appreciated, especially uh, uh, yeah, after all we've, we've been working on. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you and good luck. So um, we have no legislative matters administrative items or preliminary discussion items. Um, we are for at least the foreseeable future in the first half of the year, we are probably going to maintain the once a month meeting schedule with the exception being January because um, we need to pull together for you and your review an annual report of your 2020 activities to go on to the city commission and so we will probably have a uh, a zoom meeting that we'll call on the the 19th two weeks from today so that you can review and comment and ask questions about the annual report as we owe you a, a summary of everything that you did in the strange year of of 2020 with all of our mixed meeting formats if there was a meeting format we probably had one um, in 2020 so we'll we'll give you a summary of of that and the cases that were heard and then um, we'll have a meeting the first um, first Tuesday of February March April um, and so we'll we'll continue with just the one meeting a month for the foreseeable future. Um, and I would imagine that they'll continue to be held by Zoom until there's some dramatic change. Um, but um, city city staff, if, that, if that's any indication, we, we still have um, a number of employees out with COVID or with contract, contract chasing or um, things related to that. And so it's, um, it's, we're, I think we're going to be operating at this model, um, for the foreseeable future. Uh, if I could suggest that, um, uh, from now on, if we're going to have zoom meetings that, uh, we should mail out, uh, the agenda in minutes. It'd be, it'd be nice to have it right in front of you. And, and then also I've participated in other uh, Zoom meetings, probably maybe a, a couple dozen. Uh, and I've never heard it cut out like it has been today. And I've even seen the screen freeze up for a second or two. Uh, I don't know if it's a bandwidth problem or, or what it is, but... Uh, it was a little choppy, unless it was just on my end. 
I, I only had one time. I mean, we're we're doing a shared screen approach and we're trying to show graphics. So there, <clears throat> there's going to be things that go in and out. But from my end, I, I only had one point where Mr. Olson that made a comment and the very first part of it was cut out. But I, I can't speak for the rest of you, but from on my end, I, I didn't have any um, issues with hearing or I've been able to see who is speaking. Okay. Well, maybe it's on my end. I occasionally got a uh, message that my internet connection was unstable, which I've never got before, though, either. Oh. Dustin, as meeting moderator, did you have any technical issues that you observed from your end? No, I, I didn't experience anything. Um, the only one that I saw. Uh, was the the moment when when Mr. Olson was asking a question and we missed the front end of it, but um, that was the only one that I I had where I couldn't hear something. Uh, I will say that sometimes there is a little bit of a delay between what I'm trying to show on the screen and what actually gets shared and shown on your guys's end, and it's it's usually a, a second or or two or three. Usually it's not too terribly bad, um, but it's not to the point where you can't hear. It, it doesn't as, seem to affect sound. It seems to just be that um, there's a little bit of a delay on, on what I'm sharing and what you're seeing. But that's I think that's n normal along all Zoom meeting platforms, as far as I'm aware. And, and in terms of our uh, members of the public or public input i would say and i know mr olson was at that meeting as board of, as your planning commission representative on board of zoning appeals but we had a board of zoning appeals meeting in december and i i think we had 17 or 18 people yeah. in on that meeting and um it it worked really well in terms of i think that everyone that was a member of the public whether they were an applicant or um, an interested neighbor or whatever that except for one technical problem we had with one speaker um, we were able to accommodate a whole bunch of people in that meeting and it worked pretty well I, yeah, I would agree I think it worked really well we had just the one person that when they first started talking we could hear them and then it went dead and couldn't hear them afterwards but otherwise it worked out well Bit to get the public in, have them make their comments, and then be able to continue with the meeting. Well, in, in fact, right now, it, it seems to be a lot better. I'll bet it's my internet connection. But I, yeah, I just at least wanted to share with commissioners that um, it's, I don't think it was demonstrated at the Board of Zoning Appeals meeting that, that interested members of the public that want to join in and participate and get their comments in. Um, that was a very widely attended Board of Zoning Appeals meeting, and we got lots of public input, and everybody got to participate. So I think it's it's just a matter of, um, in the case of Mr. Hall, um, South Ohio Land, either them or Stan Byquist owns almost all the land in the in the vicinity of that, so there, there weren't a lot of um, outside parties and in the case of um, Sunset Plaza, we just we just we sent out our notices, but we just didn't get any um, feedback either way. But I I think the Board of Zoning Appeals meeting demonstrated that interested members of the public are able to fully participate. We just haven't had a lot of public input on Planning Commission our last couple meetings. Dustin, do we have anybody there for a public forum? I'm not seeing anybody that uh, is expressing any interest uh, to speak on something other than uh, what we've already discussed with our items, our agenda items. Well, I'll make a motion we adjourn. I'll second it. Okay, we've got a motion to adjourn. It's been seconded. Those in favor, well, I'm sorry, I'll do the roll call. We'll, we'll, we'll do the roll call for adjournment too, just to be consistent. So Commissioner Baffa. Uh, aye. Commissioner Waters. Aye. 
Commissioner Hay. Aye. Commissioner Olson. Aye. And Commissioner Lankiewicz. Aye. All right, we have a motion to adjourn that's been unanimously approved. And what we will attempt to do then, Mr. BAPA, is that we will um, send out by mail the annual report and attachments um, when, we, when we do the packet. And that way, you won't have to worry about printing stuff out and you can have something in front of you when you if you have questions for us but we um, we'll meet again on the 19th so you can review that report thanks you guys thanks everybody all right thanks for everybody to happy new year thank you thank you happy new year too